Alright, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss uh, further into limit laws and look at the proof of the product law. Based on my earlier video, I went over a bunch of limit laws. Now we're going to basically prove this one is law four of that limit laws overview video. You can see the video link below in the description to see that video. Basically, uh, this law states uh, limit as x part j of fx times g of x just equal to the limit of, of fx as x approaches a times the limit of g of x as x approaches a and you could write it as basically it's called the product law and, it, and it's stated as the limit of a product is the product of a limit or just multiplication of two limits right here now before I prove it I just want to rewrite the uh, limits above here so limit of fx as x approaches a we'll just call it l and the limit as g of x uh, or x approaches a of g of x is equal to m right here so then we're just gonna have now yeah, this the now yeah we're gonna have this limit now limited as x part of f x times g of x just equal to l times m right now. And now what I'll use to prove this uh, limit here, this limit law, we're just gonna use the precise definition of a limit. And I'll just recap on this one as shows sure my earlier video. You can see that in the video link below on more uh, basically information on this. But basically, I'm just gonna recap quickly. So this precise definition states limit as x part a of f x equals to l. If for every number epsilon, which is greater than zero, there's a number delta, which is uh, greater than zero as well, such that you have this thing right here, uh, the difference fx minus l, epsilon value is going to be less than this epsilon whenever we have x minus a is less than this uh, delta right here. So I'm not going to go over too much on this uh, uh, definition, so just see the video link below in the description. But now we'll just basically uh, prove that limit law using this definition and now to prove this product law we just basically have to write that product law in terms of the precise definition of a limit and basically find like my other proving videos on limits find this delta here because we're going to be given this epsilon just for every number we just need to make sure that there is a number delta such that it's greater than zero and you have this uh, case right here so we're just going to write that product law in in terms of this definition so we're just going to write now uh, this one's going to be yeah, this is going to be f of x now times g of x. Now we're going to do minus l times m right here. And this one we have to set as less than this epsilon. And now it's whenever we have yeah, x minus a is less than this delta here. So we got to find this. Yeah, it's basically we just got to find this and we're given this, uh, del this epsilon right here. And now we basically we want to rewrite this so that we get these two terms uh, fx minus l and g of x minus m the absolute values of it just like my uh, proof of the sum law and I'll show you why in a bit but we basically want this one right here this will help simplify their equations and these equations we could basically solve for this delta I'll explain that soon but basically to do that what we could do is add uh, g of x times it by l and subtract g of x times by l. We have basically from this part right here. So if we rewrite this, we're gonna have fx times g of x plus g of x times l, then minus g of x times l. So we're not affecting it in any way. Minus l times m right here. Epsilon value is less than this uh, epsilon right here. And then, now this part right here, we could rearrange this part right here by basically comparing uh, this part with this part and taking the g of x out so we're gonna get g of x times it by now this is gonna be f of x minus l so we have this part right here fx minus l and then we'll compare this part right here with this lm and take the l out so we're gonna get now plus l this is gonna be now g of x minus m right here and now this is going to be less than this epsilon. And now we can simplify this further by applying the triangular inequality, which states a plus b, the absolute value, is less than equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b. You can see the video link below on uh, basically the proof of this. I'm not going to go over too much on this. So now we're going to go, now we can simplify this and separate it using this triangle inequality and we're gonna get yeah so we'll get basically this one here this entire limit here now is gonna be less than this when we separate it when we just look at the absolute values right here and now also this would uh, also equal to uh, well because we could just take these L's out and then put them in this L and G of X out and put an absolute value of it you can see video link below on more on absolute values but basically because we're gonna basically have this G of X times this by FX minus L so if this is gonna be negative or positive it's not gonna affect the, the value of this because we're gonna take the absolute value of it so we could write this as g of x 
absolute value. And basically we get, yeah, g of x times by fx minus l. These are absolute values uh, out of it, and this one's be absolute value of l times absolute value of g of x uh, minus m, this all in this absolute value right here. And now we've gotten these two terms, which I explained at the beginning we want, and I'll show why. But before that, since we have two terms now instead of the one, and we know that the entire one's supposed to be less than, uh, less than epsilon, we're gonna call this less than epsilon over two, so we just sub uh, separate both of them, we just impose this on it, less than epsilon over two here. And we, and we say that we impose this on it just so that the addition of it's gonna be less than epi anything. Now I'm going to basically explain why we want this fx minus l term and this g of x minus m ter term. And that's basically from this, uh, what we're given here. We're given that limit as x is a of fx equals to l, which is given. So we're given this limit. It follows that the precise definition of a limit from it. There has to be a fx minus l absolute value less than this epsilon 1. It's, it's different from our epsilon whenever you have x minus a which is less than this delta one here so these are just separate i just put these ones and ones here to separate it from our other epsilon and delta which we're trying to find out but in this case right now i'm basically going to set this epsilon one just for convenience sake as this epsilon over two times it by this is actually pretty a clever way my textbook had one plus absolute value of m right here so i'm just merely setting it as this you'll see why yeah, you'll see why later on in the proof, which this will just easily cancel out stuff. And we could do this because I'm not, not really changing it too much. Because remember, this epsilon could be any number, so we're just making it any number, but following this notation here, uh, divided by 2 and 1 divided by 1 plus absolute value of m right here. And now similarly, uh, with the exact same thing as above, uh, the same logic, we're going to go since the limit of s as x per day of g of x equals to m, then we have to have this since the definition of the precise definition g of x minus m is less than epsilon 2 whenever x minus a is less than delta 2 and now this is and now we're actually just setting this exactly a similar logic to this one epsilon 2 is equal to epsilon the one in our main the main equation divided by 2 times by 1 divided by 1 plus absolute value of l right here and I'll explain why we're setting it as this but we can because this can be any number that's all I want to know is I want to get out to you is that we can make it whatever we want so we make it like this and I'll show you why soon and now another actually uh, another thing I want to impose on is this one right here we'll just say absolute value of g of x minus m is less than one here because we're going to be closer and closer to the limit as of, of m and as you know with limits as you know with limits if you look at the g of x right here this graph r right here and if this is limit m we want at this a we're just saying that now the fx is going to be less than 1 here, or the dis if the distance epsilon value is 1, so this is m plus 1, this one here is m minus 1, all we're saying is going to be in between here. So we're just imposing that it's going to be less than 1, because remember, we, we're trying to get it to really, really, really small, so basically it equals each other, or it's getting closer, closer to 0, so we're just imposing less than 1, I'll show you why soon. So that this is whenever x minus a is less than, now, now we have a new delta, delta 3 right here. So then if we rearrange this the whole reason i have this is just so we could rearrange this if we have g of x absolute value of g of x just by itself this just equals to now if we just do some manipulation we're going to have let's say minus m and plus m right here so then now we're going to have this part and then using triangular inequality again we're going to have g of x minus m right here and then plus absolute value of m right here so this is just again using the triangular inequality so yeah, just make sure you understand triangular inequality by looking at the video link below on it. So we have this one right here, and now we, since we impose that it's less than 1 right here, this part's going to be now less than, this is going to be less than 1 plus absolute value of m right now. Now I'll, I'll get to why we have this, uh, which is pretty clever, my calculus book uh, had it here. So now, because remember, all we're trying to do now is to find a delta in, in that first case. So now all we do is let delta be the minimum or the lowest value of the three deltas we have. So delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3 right here. So if we let it, uh, if it's the minimum right here, so if we have x minus a absolute values less than this delta, then we then it's true for all these three that we uh, we have to have. And yeah, then basically we have x minus a, if, if this is true, x minus a is less than delta, then we have x minus a is less than delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3 right here. Thus, all of our cases here is all true. So now we can basically just combine all these two.
all these together and then you're gonna see that the terms cancel out and we basically prove our product law and basically right now if we write it all together combine everything fx times g of x minus l now is less than this g of x absolute value times fx minus l absolute value plus l absolute value times g of x minus m and now we could write this all together or just uh, write what we know and now this one is going to be just less than we know g of x since this uh, little manipulation i was doing right here is going to be equal to one plus absolute value of m so it's going to be one plus absolute value of m right here and now this fx minus l since we uh, impose it right here fx minus l is going to be less than epsilon one which is this epsilon divided by two times one divided by one plus epsilon value of m and as you can see from this ones if you just put it in here these will cancel so that's the whole idea what i had this right here so now we have to plus the last thing we have now is absolute value of l now this g of x minus m similarly to this one we have it now epsilon over two times it by one this is going to be one plus absolute value of l right here thus when we cancel the these ones out we're going to just going to get now epsilon over two and now this one right here this one this right here since we have this l divided by one plus l where these are absolute values this is going to be less than one so when we have something less than one times it by uh, let's you know, so then less than one something like this times it by a delta over two This is going to be less than delta over two here because this is a fraction right here It's a fraction of less than one anything you times it by is going to be less than what you originally had So then we're going to have this whole thing's going to be plus epsilon over two it, no, This is going to be less than epsilon over two and then plus epsilon over two here So this one because it's going to be less than this one all we're looking at is less than not equals or anything So then this whole thing's going to be equal to epsilon right here and thus, basically, to summarize everything, we have this limit of uh, x bar of f of x times g of x equals to this, the, this product law limit f of x as x approaches a, and limit of g of x as x approaches a. This is number l, this is m right here. And now we have from the precise definition f of x minus f of x times g of x minus lm is going to be less than this epsilon, which we've proved we have right here, whenever x minus a is less than this delta right here and this one we have found this one out this is just going to be the minimum of those three deltas which we've proven and they that we have to have since that we have we're given this uh these two uh, limits right here well uh, that's all for today if you learn from this really uh, it's abstract proof once you get your head around the precise definition it's it's pretty straightforward and also triangle inequality just make sure you understand it. it's pretty straightforward it's just a lot of abstract wording and, and whatnot well it's all for today now we can download these notes and the Dropbox, Dropbox links below, and uh, it's uh, yeah. Stay tuned for another math. E